morning and welcome to Esquire Group's webinar on the hidden dangers of beneficial owner registries. Uh, like with all of our webinars, we're going to start out with a brief disclaimer. Uh, this presentation was prepared for educational purposes only. This presentation is not legal or tax advice, nor is it to be construed as such. Each individual circumstances are different. You should seek legal and or tax advice to address any specific questions you may have. Um, I'm your presenter. My name is Jimmy Sexton. I am the founder and CEO of Esquire Group, which is an international tax advisory firm. Uh, I specialize in strategic consulting and international taxation, including uh, U.S. citizens with foreign income or assets, expatriation, family offices, succession planning, structures for ultra high net worth individuals, and corporate structures for small and mid-sized enterprises. I have a bachelor's in business administration with an emphasis in finance, uh, JD and LLM. I'm fluent in English and German. Uh, I've lived and worked all over the world. And so I have a fairly good understanding of the various legal systems and business customs throughout the world. And today we're going to be talking uh, about a relatively recent phenomena of the beneficial owner register that many countries throughout the world are implementing. Uh, especially in more developed nations. For those of you who follow uh, things like FATCA and know your customer and anti-money laundering and things of that nature, you know that the world has been moving towards uh, automatic data exchange um, of tax information between countries and transparency and basically that nothing can be private everything has to be out in the open uh, and the governments and the general public knows everything about everybody. Um, and they advertise this as a good thing. And public beneficial owner registries and beneficial owner registries in general are a further step towards transparency and the erosion of privacy. So what is a public beneficial owner register? Uh, a public beneficial owner register is a registry of beneficial owners of entities that is open to the public. Uh, generally, these registers are maintained by a government office for, and the entities that are listed in the registry are the entities that were formed uh, pursuant to that country's laws. Um, the implementation of these beneficial owner registries um, are not the same throughout all countries. Uh, some countries have public registries, some do not have public registries, meaning that only government offices uh, can get access to them for, uh, usually it's, it's things like, you know, uh, the tax office or for criminal investigations, things of that nature. Well, um, some countries open them up to the public. And the public has various definitions. So some are, you know, you can just go to the website and Google it and, and look at the public uh, owner registry. Uh, anybody can and can see who the beneficial owner is. Um, others, uh, you have to show some type of legitimate interest or the press has access. Um, so even if it's called the public beneficial owner registry, that doesn't necessarily mean that anybody in the general public has access to it. Um, but a lot of times it means that uh, the threshold for gaining access to the beneficial owner registry isn't too high. Um, as you can see from this slide, uh, the definition, like I just said, of public varies from country to country. Uh, so some of the beneficial owner streets are, are open to the public, some are not, as mentioned, uh, and the thresholds per country are different. So if you're gonna be forming an entity like a company uh, or, uh, something of that nature in a country that does have a beneficial owner registry. Uh, I think it is, if, if privacy um, is of any concern to you, I think it's definitely worth looking to see if A, the country has a beneficial owner registry and what the criteria is for uh, being listed in that beneficial owner registry. Now, like I said before, these beneficial owner registries are being advertised uh, as a positive thing. Uh, you know, the governments uh, keep advertising that, you know, the more transparency, 
is going to help cut down on anti-money laundering or help cut down on money laundering. And it's going to cut down on tax evasion and all of these things. In reality, I don't think that's really the case. I think it mostly just generates more paperwork, more due diligence, because criminals lie. And tax evaders ev evade tax through deception. Uh, so they're going to find ways, I imagine, to uh, circumvent these public own owner registries. And the only people that are going to wind up in there are people who are doing legitimate business with legitimate structures. The problem that I see with beneficial owner registries, especially public beneficial owner registries, is they don't take into account uh, the impact that this can have on business and high net worth individuals. High net worth individuals have a very different uh, profile than most people. And the dangers that they face by their wealth being public uh, also presents its own dangers and challenges. So I made a list here of some of the things that I think are, are major dangers to um, public beneficial owner registers. So the first one uh, is they undermine legitimate asset protection. So if you have money, uh, as I, I think everybody has seen through the litigation, the frivolous litigation that takes place throughout the world, especially in the United States, that if you have money, you're the target. You're the target of people trying to sue you. And so you want to protect your assets. One of the best ways to protect your assets is to make them hard to find. I mean, one of the first things lawyers do when they're trying to determine for a client whether or not somebody is worth suing is determine if the money, if the person has money to pay the judgment. And if they do, a lot of times the litigation will move forward. And if they don't, a lot of times the litigation won't move forward. Because what's the point of spending money on legal fees and things like that to sue somebody that you're going to get a judgment against that you can never collect on? And so one of the best asset protection strategies has always been just don't have your assets in your name. Now, there's absolutely nothing illegal about that. You have there are legitimate reasons and it is completely legal to place your real estate, for example, in the name of companies or trusts or something like that. There's absolutely nothing illegal about that. And then if somebody goes searching for your assets, they're not going to find it because it's in the name of ABC company. But with beneficial owner registries, they can go to the beneficial owner registry, type in somebody's name, and it's going to show of which entities they're the beneficial owners. Now that asset protection is gone. And, and that's really a shame because a lot of times uh, wealthy individuals wind up fending off frivolous lawsuits and spending hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to do so, all of which could be avoided with, could be avoided by using legitimate uh, asset protection strategies, such as just putting them in a company. But these public beneficial owner registries completely eliminate that type of, of asset protection. Um, this obviously falls right into my next point in here, which is it undermines the privacy. Uh, and, and undermining somebody's privacy, not only subjecting an ultra high net worth individual or high net worth individual to, to potential asset protection risks, uh, it, it also can pose security risks. Uh, you, you know, individuals who, and high, ultra high net worth individuals and, and their families are, are at a very uh, increased level of risk for things like kidnapping and extortion. And if people can find what assets they own, what assets people's kids own, uh, that certainly makes it a lot easier to target them. Uh, and I think that, that that's a legitimate risk that people need to be very concerned about. Uh, and this is something that obviously governments don't care about. And the general public, uh, it's, since it's not a concern for them, they don't worry about it either. But this has a definite, very real impact on high net worth individuals and, and their families. Um, it increases the susceptibility to unwarranted attacks by governments, spouses, employees, litigants, and others. And this is something that I've seen. Uh, sometimes governments uh, come after somebody 
who has a legitimate tax structure in place just because they can. And a lot of times it's not so easy to see who's behind a structure. And when I'm talking about structures, I'm not talking about illegal tax evasion. I'm talking about legal uh, means of structuring one's affairs uh, to pay the lowest amount legally possible. But when governments uh, see that somebody is paying lower tax than they want them to pay, not than they're supposed to pay, but that less than the government wants them to pay, then it makes it very easy for them to go look in other countries and find out what these people own, even if those assets aren't being hidden for illegitimate reasons. Uh, and, and, and that is definitely, uh, I, I think, a big risk for ultra high net worth individuals because governments are becoming um, uh, very aggressive with tax collection. And a lot of their claims are, are really Ill, illegitimate. Uh, you know, the governments are, are greedy. They want their cut. Uh, and a lot of times they advance arguments that, that aren't legitimate. As a matter of fact, there was um, recently a case in Canada where the Canadian government did just that. And I've seen, the, I've seen other governments do it. And so this isn't something um, that uh, is, is far-fetched. This is something that's very real that courts have actually ruled that, that governments have, have done. Uh, and also it undermines free trade. I mean, one of um, the old business tricks, uh, legal business tricks was when businesses or, uh, you know, let's say uh, a big hotel chain or something wanted to acquire a property, a lot of times they would use a blocker corporation uh, to hide who the, the ultimate owner was because if, and the seller knew that uh, the buyer was a big corporation, they would demand an unreasonably high price. And by using a blocker corporation, uh, the, the big company was, able to, was often able to negotiate um, you know, a, a, a price that was more in line with fair market value. And then that, that same strategy has worked for, for high net worth individuals for a very long time. And so my, my point is uh, that High net worth individuals uh, have very different needs and very different concerns, and they're susceptible to very different risks than the vast majority of people, and certainly uh, to the government. And in today's day and age, the wealthy are being viewed as, as, as sort of the evil people, which, which they're not. And I think that when ultra high net worth individuals and high net worth individuals structure their affairs, uh, that they really need to be careful that they structure them in such a way that they don't fall that, that they don't fall susceptible to risks that are avoidable simply uh, by not taking proper care and diligence into where they're forming their structures and how they're forming their structures because there are still some of some legal and legitimate um, strategies and structures that can be used to maintain privacy and mitigate these risks. Uh, and that's one of the things that uh, we specialize in here at Esquire Group. Uh, we do, we set up wealth structures, family offices, uh, trust companies, things like that for high net worth individuals. We do succession planning, investment structures, corporate structuring, cross-border transactions, and entity formation. If you're interested in any of our services, our contact information is here on this last slide. I certainly hope that, um, You've enjoyed our webinar today, and um, we hope to see you in a future Esquire Group webinar. Have a good day.